I met Bella in 1978 in Boston through my dance teacher, Susan Rose. Bella and her company came to perform at Harvard University, and um, I met her then. Well, I became very good friends with everybody who danced for her and eventually became very good friends with Bella and her husband. After I met them, um, it was actually in Cambridge, um, I went to Buffalo to a, a residency that they did uh, for a week, and I trained and worked with her and her company for a week, and I got to know them very well, and I really liked the way she taught. I loved her. She she was really a very special person. Um, so I decided to go to Ottawa, California the following summer and do a workshop with her and her company there, which I did. And I did that for two years. And then I actually moved to Los Angeles in 1982 to get a master's in dance at UCLA. And the only people I knew were Bella and her husband and her company. So they were my friends and they were the ones who helped me out um, when I moved. And eventually Bella and her husband became very good friends with me. Um, let's talk about Bella, the, the the dancer. What 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 was what was so special about about her her technique? Well, she was described as one of the greatest American dancers of the twentieth century, um, and for good reason. She began studying in nineteen thirty four with Lester Horton, who is a very well known figure in the modern dance world, one of the founders of modern dance. And along with Lester, she developed the Horton Technique, which now has been made very famous worldwide by the Alvin Ailey Company. Um, in fact, Alvin Ailey was one of Bella's students. So she performed with uh, the Lester Horton Company for a number of years from 1934 to 1950. And from the reviews I've read and what people have told me who saw her dance, she was the most incredible dramatic theater dancer that they had ever seen. She was also an excellent teacher. And in 1946, when um, she formed dance theater with Lester Horton, she was the director of the school. It was the first place in the United States that actually had a school for dance and a theater for dance. Um, so she was very important to the dance world and its history. Also, because she chose to stay in Los Angeles, she did not move to New York. Uh, she was uh, an Angelina and uh, did had no interest at all in going to New York. So along with, you know, collaborating on the development of the Horton Technique, she was one of the greatest dancers of the 20th century in the U.S. And uh, she went on to receive great honors like the National Medal of Arts. Um, tell us about her and the the, the 50s when the, the the Committee of Un-American Activities, what was that all about? Can you tell us a little bit? Sure. Um, in 1950, she decided to leave Lester Horton and dance theater um, because she had really started to develop her own materials and her own way of thinking about dance. And I guess one day when she was teaching after the class, Lester Horton went up to her and said, why aren't you teaching my materials? And she was completely shocked. But then when she thought about it, she realized she wasn't, that she was going in a different direction. So she told Lester Horton that she would leave and not work for a year. Um, so there would be no competition between him and her. So she did that. And then in 1951, she opened a dance studio in East Hollywood called Dance Associates. Three months after that studio opened, uh, a man came in, as she describes, as with a hat, which is sort of uh, a cue for this is not an artist, and served her a subpoena to appear before uh, the House on American Activities Committee. And she was completely surprised about this. I mean, some very famous people had been called. The Hollywood 10 had happened. Um, and she was very supportive of those who had been brought up by HUAC, but never thought she would be brought up. But she was, and she refused to testify. She, you know, They wanted her to give names, and she refused because she was also very active in Hollywood and films. She worked in many, many, many films as a dancer, a choreographer's assistant, choreographer, a dance director, and that's really how she made her living. 
So um, when she was brought up before the committee, she she pled the Fifth Amendment and would not give names. And afterwards, she went out to a group of reporters and her famous line was, I'm a dancer, not a singer. But she was then blacklisted and she was unable to work in Hollywood um, again. Can you tell us a little bit about Bella's background? It's, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, she was greatly influenced, I think, by her parents and their beliefs. Uh, she was born while her parents were living at Llano del Rio, which was a utopian socialist colony in the Mojave Desert. Um, they started the colony in 1914. She was born in 1916. Um, and it was a very uh, free place with lots of culture, lots of music, lots of dancing. It supposedly is where Montessori school principles started, um, but they ended up losing their water rights. So she left there when she was only two years old, but she talks about what a great influence it was on her and her parents um, throughout her life. And after that, her parents moved to Highland, California and had a chicken ranch, which they were not very good at from how she describes it. Um, and then in 1934, Bella and her father, Joseph, came to Los Angeles so that he could find a job in manufacturing since the depression was going on. And her job was to cook for him and take care of him. Um, and that's when she ended up getting a scholarship to a ballet studio and started taking class, but she hated ballet. And somebody there told her that there was a really good teacher down the street in Larchmont at the Norma Gould studio. And she went down there and that's where she met Lester Horton. So she lived in Los Angeles really her entire life. I mean, she and her husband um, lived on Highland in Hollywood and eventually built a house in the Hollywood Hills and eventually built a studio that was attached to the house in the Hollywood Hills. Um, and she, part of, of what she talked about all the time was how important the culture and history of Los Angeles is. Um, to a, a non-dancer, how would you describe uh, her technique? It's, um, well, I think today, because everybody knows Pilates, <laughs> um, if, if, and, and the whole thing about Pilates is a strong core. Well, that's definitely what Bella taught. She was very specific about her technique. Uh, her dancers were known for their strength and their flexibility, both. They had incredibly strong cores, which meant they could pretty much do anything with their arms and their legs that they wanted to do. Um, also part of her technique, um, which she did not like anybody calling it the Lewitsky technique, but part of, the tech, of that technique came from the Horton technique, which was based on Native American dance. So um, if you look at her dance, you can see where, you know, the floor is really like a big drum and people are using their feet and their movement to do these drumming patterns. And that is something that stuck with her for her entire life. So it's a completely different influence from a lot of the techniques on the East Coast who were greatly influenced by um, European dance makers. Um, I would say the Horton technique and the work that Bella did with Horton is really an American born technique. Um. How would you compare the her the, her the dance style to let's say Martha Graham's? I would think I think that um, Bella has much more elevation. Um, the jump there was a lot of jumping and really high jumping, and it was a lot of changing levels. Like you might start on the floor and do a spiral to get up in the air and then come back down to the floor again. Or she developed this very famous thing called the T-fall where you're on one leg and a hinge leaning back and all of a sudden uh, the body just goes up and down and lands on the floor. And people are like, how did that happen? How, how did she do that? Um, so the Graham technique was all based on um, contraction, on breathing, um, and it was a floor technique um, 
I think Bella's technique, because she developed it out here in the West, was much more expansive and I think reflected the surroundings that she grew up with, which was she lived in the desert and the mountains and the colors. And it's just a much more uh, reaching out and expansive technique, I think, than the Graham technique. You mentioned this earlier. Would you say that Alvin Ailey is is like the the next generation or the 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 progeny of 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 Bella of that technique? Um, well, there was a group when she um, they started the school and dance theater in 1946. This whole new group of students came in, and I guess Alvin Ailey started out really as a technical person. He was helping with the stage stuff, but other people like Carmen de Lavalade and Joyce Trisler. Um, March Percy's, uh, Jimmy Truitt, all ended up moving, and Alvin, all ended up moving to the East Coast and bringing the Horton technique to the East. So yeah, those were, that group was probably the most famous group that came out of her training. 